I am Madison Timmons. I'm Chris Susi. And we're paranormal specialists who live in the most haunted city on earth, Savannah, Georgia. Every day is Halloween in our line of work, so join us as we spin true tales of haunts, murders, and disturbing Savannah history. I'm Madison. I'm Chris. And, and welcome, welcome to, to the most haunted city on earth. Bop, bop, boom. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of the most haunted city on earth. My name is Madison Timmons. I'm Chris Susie. And I wish I had another meat stick for lunch. Disappointing. I only don't had like two. the term meat stick. Meat stick. Meat I'm just going to go out and say not my favorite term. A jerky log? Would you prefer Also that? not my favorite term. <laughs> it's getting there's worse. Any. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will go with meat stick, all right? A beef tube? Stop it! Oh, God, man. A beef tube. Oh, no. I mean, if you don't like... Uh, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. No. And this is why Wondery hasn't picked us up yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're like absolutely we keep getting close off. and then they're like what what is that <laughs> jerky log jerky log yes <laughs> drop them back down <laughs> bottom of the list so yes. close so close <laughs> well welcome back y'all um we have a ghost caught on camera for you today um we did not source these from our normal sources no, no you guys sent these to us <laughs> they came to us organically in a row and so we were gonna do a ghost mail but we we're like well these are all photos yep um so we we're like well i guess that is a ghost caught on camera um i guess listener edition Ding. Wow. Wow. Okay. You're fine. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Um, so, yeah, we are going to look at some ghost photos. Yes, we are. Um, before that, though, we want to thank a couple new para junkies. Ooh, who thank you. Thank you. Welcome Ye to the family. Welcome to the para junkie land. Yeehaw. <laughs> oh, God. All right, so we want to thank Run the World. Yes. Girls. Run the World. Yes. <laughs> Taylor Bonick, Kim Dixon, Sherry Mizell, and Don Nichols. So thank you guys so much for, for, sure, for sure. joining us over in the Para Junkie land. And what do they get? They everything. They get everything. All of it. Literally everything we yeah. do. Yeah, they and it's have ad so much content. Ad free content for days, and when we go on special adventures, we take you along with us. Yes, it's true. Live streams out the butt. Yeah, we get so many live streams. We're going to Waverly Hills. You're gonna get into the body sheet possibly. April twenty um, fourth. April twenty fourth, and um, so it's gonna be really fun. And they always get everything before everybody else. They get it ad free, which is super cool. Um, so yeah, if you're into that sort of thing, go join all those nice people over there. They're a really good group. Honestly, like I, I love the 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 chats that Patreon has mm -hmm. have added because it's brought all the pair junkies like together into a community where they can just talk. Right. We, like we have a main chat called Para Junkies Anonymous. <laughs> and uh and it and we uh, need to start a discord we had a discord but this is patreon's way of of dis oh, of, of dis disbanding discord. Yeah. Disband and gotcha. and i'm happy because discord it's was so hard better. and all that this is so it's all in app it's great and this is not a patreon ad so we can yes <laughs> we keep going <laughs> so we're gonna start out with a photo from ben ben hello ben hello Ben says, hello, my name is Ben Morgan. I wanted to send this photo to you guys for a uh, ghost mail or a ghost call and camera episode. I'm a big fan of you all and would love to see y'all's opinions. We're a big on fan the of photo. you, Ben. Yes, we are. Faces of the people have been blocked out for privacy purposes. All right, there's the photo. There. There is the photo. It's like very clear. Yes. Yes. Just the Opry, Opry Mill, Mill uh, Mall. Mall. Opry Mill Mall. Like, what in the world? What in tarnation is that? So I analyzed it, and um, I analyzed it, and for for people who see it and are like, it's it's fake and all that, um, mm -hmm. I uh, I did a little analyzing, and I the grain over both 
the image, like the figure and the rest of the image is the exact same. Uh, like it has the exact same look. So, um, I mean, not saying that Ben would send anything in, right. you know, like that's fake, but I'm just saying. But that's uh, the first reaction. That's right. the first reaction. Have. That, yeah. Because that's the first reaction for all these photos that pe- that people send in. Exactly. Um, it, looks, it's, it's, it looks really. Uh, it's, it's fascinating. It is. It's it very like interesting. A, it looks it's like, like a the black insidious and, lady. <laughs> God. Kind of yeah. does. It's like a black and white image, sort of, which is kind of bizarre. Mm-hmm. Well, they're in um, a movie theater, yes? Yes. Which is interesting. Right. Um, but it looks like a woman who's walking through the aisles. She has like a very tight bun. It definitely looks like she's got a tight bun. She means business. Or that her head is actually somehow uh, obscured at the top there. Mm. And uh, this is in uh, uh, Tennessee. Oh, very nice. Nashville. Yeah. Okay. In Opryland. Yeah, Opryland. Yeah. So Opry Mill Mall, I think, is right there. Um, something something y'all don't know about uh, me is I'm a massive fan of Nashville. I don't listen to country music at all, and I am obsessed with that city. It's a great, it's a great city. city. It's so great. But it is fascinating, it though. Is fascinating. Like, it's very, it feels like very clear ghostly activity because yeah. it's it too, does seem like here that. it is again. It's too out of. I mean, there's so the, many things going on, too. It almost looks right. like she's got a crystal ball in her yeah, hand. Yeah. So yeah. that's it what I was going to. It looks like there's a, a vortex, like, swelling. Uh, right. For all the people listening. At the center. So um, if you're listening, the picture that we're looking at uh, is uh, obviously a selfie inside of a movie theater and behind, two rows behind the people taking the selfie is a figure. And mm-hmm. when you first look at the figure, it just seems like a blurry woman. Uh, but the more you look at it, the more you realize there are strange things about the proportion. But uh, the further away you get from it, the clearer the mm-hmm. image is of yep. what it is. It, it definitely seems like a woman with either a very tight bun or possibly a bonnet. Right. Um, uh, a, a black dress. It looks like she's holding a sphere of some type. And um, at the center of her mass is a very dark spot. And that spot um, seems to have kind of a vortex-like quality to it, like there is depth inside of this darkness. Mm-hmm. Um, now the more I look at it closer um, – it almost looks like something from Sunday in the Park. It looks like a Monroe. In a way, yeah. Do you see it? It yes. looks like she's wearing a hat, but the hat is gone. Mm. Right? The hat would right. be tilted down. Because there's such a very straight angle covering the top of her head. Right. So there's something strange about this image um, the more I look at it. And it is one of those things that the more you look at, the more you're like, oh, there, there's something odd going on. Right. Um, but like at first blush, when you're just looking at it, it just looks like there's a woman standing yep. in the back row of this theater. Uh, however, uh, the closer you look at it, the more you're like, ah, something's up. Something, Something is, is up. strange. Well, and she doesn't look and like you can she's... actually see through her. Yeah. Yup, yup. And on Patreon, I just uploaded uh, all of the images from this episode's Ghost Caught on Camera. So if you're following along with the live stream, you can go and uh, zoom in and take a yes. look yourself now on uh, Patreon officially at this very second. And For whatever it is, it's very compelling to look it at. It is. It's very compelling. I don't know the history of what that property used to be. Um, no. But it could have been a number of different things. But you imagine that uh, a city like Nashville has a long history. Oh, yeah. And there's exactly. so much to, to consider uh, when, when, when you deal with that because it definitely looks like this person is wearing uh, out-of-date clothing. Right. So it makes you think that it's possibly someone from the early part of the 19th century, uh, early part of the 20th century, or late part of the 19th century. Mm-hmm. She could have been mm-hmm. a psychic. You know? She could have been. Well, yeah, and, the, yeah. and it, it does, to me, look like she's got a crystal ball. Yeah. But, yeah, it's a very compelling photo, though, Ben. And thank you very much for sending it in, because it is very you, interesting. Yeah, if you have any background, Ben, we'd love to do a follow-up. Yeah, if you yeah. know any stories, um, and it's interesting, because we don't talk about haunted malls right. often but malls again being congregation points for lots of people social areas for lots of people it absolutely can draw the kind of energy from spirits who are looking for connection mm-hmm. so you know if a spirit does not have a specific thing that it has to get done like avenge mm-hmm. murder or things like that they are looking for places where people gather so that they can 
experience life again. That's why theaters are so haunted. Here you have malls, which are a huge point of gathering for a lot of people. Maybe not so much anymore, but there was, right. a, time there was a time when the mall was where people went to socialize, to be, you know, out of the house and and meet with friends, especially movie theaters mm -hmm. in that in that regard. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much, Ben. And we are heading on over to Stacy. Um, so first off, I just want to say that I absolutely love the podcast and I can't wait to listen to the new episodes every week. Please oh, feel thanks. free to cut this down if it's too long. Um, hello, my name is Stacy and I wanted to share a photo I captured back in October of 2011. For as long as I can remember, I have had a love and fascination for the paranormal. I always found myself drawn to cemeteries and no haunted, uh, known haunted locations. So in 2011, when I saw an advertisement in the community college booklet for a ghost hunting class led by an experienced paranormal investigator and medium, I knew I had to immediately jump on the chance to take the class. Tom took a group of 12 people, including himself and myself, to an old miners cemetery in the mountains of Utah, where I captured the photo. It was my second investigation with the class, and I had no clue what I was doing. I was randomly taking photos of all the old headstones and of the landscape. It was fall, my favorite season after all. Uh, didn't experience anything odd or unusual while there. I was just happy to be there. Later that night, I was loading the pictures off of my camera onto the computer to show my husband where I was. And as we were looking through the photos, my husband spotted the full black figure that I didn't even see when I was taking the photo. The next class I showed Tom and uh, he confirmed that the shadow figure in the photo was paranormal. For a few weeks after I would wake up with the feeling of being watched and kept seeing what appeared to be a black figure at the end of my bed. It, it didn't give off any bad vibes. It was just there. I only saw it about five or six times and then nothing since I've had experiences before, but taking the class and, um, having this one experience gave me the push I needed to seek out joining a paranormal group. And that's what I did. Oh, I've been a happy member of the Washington slash Oregon taps family team, a uh, big river paranormal for the past 12 years. And I get to do the one thing I love the most, explore the paranormal. Aww. That's super cool. That is really cool. Yeah. I've met many awesome folks and investigated many haunted places and I can't wait to do more. If you guys are ever in Washington state, we would love to take you to one of our favorite haunted places in the PNW. Oh, absolutely. That would yeah. be super cool. Heck yeah. Um, Thank you for reading, and I can't wait to see what your thoughts are about the photo. Uh, one is the original photo, and the other is when I took my family to the cemetery to try to recreate the photo. I know it's a different season, but that's because we haven't lived um, there for well over a decade. So very nice. Well, thank yeah. you so much, Stacey. I'm go. excited to read this. Yeah, no, Absolutely. seriously. Okay, so here's the original photo. So um, we are looking at a um, kind of an overgrown cemetery. Yeah. There's lots of trees everywhere, tall grass, um, you know, obviously a monument inside of a wrought iron fence. And uh, just beyond on the right side of the photo are some trees. And in between the trees is quite obviously a figure standing there. Right. Um, the figure is Very, unnaturally dark. Yes. <laughs> uh, it does not look like um, – a the normal shadow, shadow. that yeah. you would get from like the light being behind somebody and and obscuring their features, um, and it does seem to be facing the camera, even though there is no way to know that it's facing the camera. Right, <laughs> uh, it has that sensation that it is something looking at you. Um, I almost think he's wearing a hat. Oh Lord, not uh, no! Hat, is he wearing a hat? I think he's wearing a like fedora. It, yeah, it kind of looks like it. No way. Take a closer look. Yeah. It I really know. does. When yeah, you start to look at it more, it starts over. to kind oh, of. Oh, crap. You're right. Yeah. Um, I would definitely. Which uh, would make sense why you saw it standing in your room. And yeah. Uh, something that we talked about before uh, on numerous occasions. Um, when you go to a cemetery, oftentimes ghosts are looking for something to uh, focus on. Uh, people who, who show up with a certain energy and have a certain kind of air about them. The ghost will follow you home mm -hmm. and will attach to you. But what we haven't talked about is the fact that some ghosts can't hook 
onto a, a mm. place or a person. When they leave the place that they are haunting or the place that they are, they're oftentimes hoping and gambling that they'll be able to associate with the next place. They'll be able to hook into you and feed off of you. But if it can't, it will dissipate after a while. It'll have to go back to the place where its energy is strongest. So in a lot of cases, ghosts will follow you home, but if they can't root wherever you go, they could conceivably lose their ground and have to go back to where they started. And that's why I say when you go ghost hunting, you should stop somewhere before you go home. Mm -hmm. Because where you stop after a ghost hunt is oftentimes where the spirit tries to lodge into and tries to find root. So uh, I I always go to like a, a Waffle House. So there are lots of haunted waffle houses all around Savannah. Because, <laughs> because of I go, Yeah, because of me. Because I go, ghosts follow me, I go to Waffle House, and they're like, okay, this seems nice. All right, and I'll they just all hang out choose here. And violence. They just, yeah, they, <laughs> and that's why there are chairs that's why, throwing. That's why Waffle House is such a scary place. It's because uh, I drop all my ghosts off there. So um, That is... That's so funny. Ridiculous. That is so funny. I'm partial to tacos, ghost tacos. Ghost um, tacos. And then this was them trying to recreate it with, yes. I'm assuming. With just a person standing yeah. in, in roughly the same area. Not not nearly the same. I yeah. think you had yourself a odd hat man yeah. encounter. A daylight hat man encounter, Weird. which is which is pretty phenomenal, really. Yeah. When spirits show themselves in the daylight, it is because, A, they have a lot of energy to expend. It's very difficult to pierce the veil that we put in front of ourselves during the day. Pierce the veil. Um, so they show up in daylight because they have enough energy to make themselves known. Mm-hmm. They can mm-hmm. compete with living people for for uh, attention. And that's that puts them in a very powerful position. That's crazy. That is crazy. But yeah. I uh, I is... just emailed him and asked him if he wanted to be a guest on the podcast. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's like a he's a paranormal. Well, a twelve year veteran. Like yeah. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Absolutely. Let's let's. Yeah. I bet he, I bet let's I bet yak. he do got stories. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Let's absolutely. Um. But yeah. So thank you, Stacy. Um. And then we're gonna move on to Trisha, who is a para junkie also. So, oh, excellent. Yes. Thank you for your support. Thank you. I thought you were going to say thank you for your service. Thank you for your service. (laughs) (laughs) So, hi, Madison and Chris. I recently found your podcast a couple of weeks ago while searching for a paranormal show. And I have to say that I absolutely love your energy and your enthusiasm and your production style. So thank you very much. Thank you. Um, it's all fantastic. I have a ghost. Uh, I have a ghost photo slash photos um, story. I would like to share with you and your listeners. Before I start, uh, I think that I should tell you guys that I am a clairsentient and mm-hmm. have been my entire life. So clairsentience is when you um, feel energy, basically. Um, so it doesn't necessarily – it can be uh, go hand-in-hand hand with clairvoyance, mm-hmm. clairaudience, or any of the other clairabilities. But clairsentience particularly is the ability to feel energy slash move energy. A very well-developed TVGB meter. Yes, very (laughs) well-developed. And have been my entire life. Experiences like the one I'm about to share always seem to remind me of that fact. Hmm. In April of 2022, my husband and I took a trip up to Seattle to check out some properties and have a nice few days away to spend time together. One thing that I've always wanted to do is take a Seattle underground tour. Hmm. Um, I don't know why, but I have always wanted had visions of its dark, musty, dirty underground ghost towns in my head, but I never knew why I did. Um, we were in town for a long three-day weekend, so we booked our historic Seattle underground tour for Friday. We received a text with the meeting address the day of, um, and we're told to arrive in Pioneer Square by 6 p.m., As we walked closer to the meetup place, I could feel a heavy energetic change and could see the darkness in the air. It was so tangible. After the tour guide finished her lengthy underground rules, we followed her and the rest of the group down crickety iron uh, stairs that took us down to the first area of the tour. The guide started her memorized script in our first room, an old brothel parlor. As she spoke, I felt pulled towards an old door on the far side of the room. So I walked away from the group and immediately pulled out my iPhone from my pocket and snapped a half dozen photos, Hmm. three towards a door, three towards uh, through a glassless old window to the right of it. 
And when I finished, I put my phone in my in back in my back pocket uh, and walked back to the meetup uh, with the group as the guide led us back up another set of rickety old iron stairs back to the street so we could carry on to the next underground area. It was around 630 as we rose back up to the streets and I pulled my phone to look at my photos and I immediately gasped as I looked at the first photo because I saw a full bodied apparition clear as day. I showed my non-believing husband thinking he would tell me it was just a blur, dust or whatever debunking he could immediately think of, but he didn't. Instead, he said, that's a ghost. What What made you take that picture of that dark, dirty, yeah. empty room? Wow. Oh, you felt something, huh? <laughs> <laughs> felt in all caps. Uh, I just looked at him as if I said, yeah, I did. Uh, he was officially freaked out, but I carried on and said, do you see his arms behind his back? Do you see him looking off? Doesn't he look like a Colonel Sanders? <laughs> I showed that apparition picture to a lot of people when I got back home, but it was months before a friend of mine saw what was in the other photo. It was my gifted friend, Jason. And he said, did you see all of the faces in the door? Hmm. I had no idea what he was talking about until the enlar- uh, he enlarged the photo and he had seen what I had captured. It, in that door were six faces. Then he said something that really shook my world. Oh, yeah. You are, a, uh, you are a gatherer. You were there to help them move on. Too bad you didn't. Dang. Ooh. Hey, That's Jason pretty heavy. Came, oh. Jason came for the jugular. Oh, my God. <laughs> You're such a disappointment to the spiritual realm. To this day, I feel terribly that oh. I did it. You're no. okay. It's okay. It is not your responsibility. <laughs> I really do need to go back. I will take. I will someday soon, and we'll definitely be taking pictures. Well, regardless, Trisha, that's a crazy story. Goodness. Um, so, so turn my brightness up a little bit. I will say, I, I, I do see. You have to zoom in, but so you, then you photo. see the, you see the, uh, and then the faces. Oh. E. Yeah. They're like there's so like, many of they're them. They're like theater masks. Yeah, they yeah. really are. They're like theater masks, like um um your favorite play, Fan of the Opera. Yeah, these are more like creepy baby doll theater mask. Yeah, than like good old Phantom, but good old Phantom. Yeah, I'm but having a hard time imagining that these are human spirits that are trapped. Right. It's just bizarre that they all kind of look like that. Right. Yeah, except for that gentleman who seems to be a bearded bald man. Yes. Yeah, um, so uh, for those of you who are just listening, um, we were given uh, pictures, two pictures. Um, one seems to have uh, what appears to be a, a full-bodied apparition in a lens flare. You know, mm-hmm. you have this kind of um, capture of light that is giving you a shape, and it does seem to be um, – It does. Uh, almost a, a soldier-like stance, you know, uh, a straight-backed man uh, looking off. Uh, but the next one is um, concerning. Is concerning, and it 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 there is a blur factor to it, and the blur factor puts it at what are we looking at in the doorway? When you look close to the doorway, it looks like a lot of faces. Uh, some larger than others, some closer than others. Uh, just a, a a sort of a if I were making a horror movie, mm-hmm. this would be the vibration of a bunch of faces. Yes. You know, just beyond the door. Yeah. Suggesting that beyond the door is a place where a lot of soul spirits are having some kind of um, issue. Right. It, well, it, it's almost like if you took a bunch of baby faces, like baby doll faces, like creepy porcelain ones, and put it on a dish and just spun them really fast. Well, because That's, there are also these yeah. faces. Yeah, those are which even worse. Seem hooded or yes. you know, masked uh, in the sense of not having any of the the facial features, just these socketed eyes, which also gives way to this notion that we're not not really looking at just humans. Um, so what a, what would they be if they're there's just a couple like that are they look more than likely human? But they look similar. They all look similar. It yeah. almost seems like what you're looking at are are tormentors and tormented. Mm. Um, because up here you start to see like anguished faces. Yeah. Um, you can spend a lot of time looking at this picture because it does yeah. seem to just be a bunch of faces overlapping each other, 
And in the overlapping, you can see larger features like this right. looks like a very big head. Yeah, it does. Yeah, you know, and you start to get like the notion that um, whatever is trying to make its presence known is in motion. So that's super cool. It is indeed. Um, yeah, that's horrifying, Trisha. Um, I'm also a little concerned that you like felt compelled to go over to that. Yes. Um, Something drew you there. Yeah, because that is a little troubling. Um, you know, because a lot of times when you are sensitive to spirits, uh, things can pick up on that. Um, you and, know, and definitely tempt you to yes. come closer. Absolutely, and. One of the classic ways uh, to tempt you is to seem like they're in distress or to give you the notion of, you know, um, of your responsibilities to them. Right. Because that is a way to enter into a contract with these spirits. Um, I also find it interesting that we had two from the Pacific Northwest. Yeah, that is really in yeah, a row. Wonder, yeah, two in a row from yeah. the Pacific Northwest. I wonder if it's not something in in the air saying we need to get that way. We have yeah. to. We need to. I'm get always over, down to get over that way. Get over I, to oh, Oregon yeah. and and Seattle. I love the Pacific Northwest. So just because, um, just because it's Sh uh, Shadow Man, mm -hmm. like um, uh, like Hat Man, and we've we've been kind of talking about that. There is a ghost mail that I just emailed you. Oh, okay. And because uh, we have enough time for, we have room for one more. Oh, um, did, we have, did we have a Hat Man uh, ghost mail? <laughs> Yeah, the um, the one. Oh, no, no. I mean, yeah. Oh, yeah. The picture. I'm saying this one. That you this one. Said. It says Shadow Man. Oh, Shadow. Yeah. So I was like, oh, it's on. It's on theme. All it's, right. Yeah. It says it playful floating hand slash Shadow Man. So we oh. will have a bonus ghost mail. Excellent. A bonus ghost. Bonus, mail. bonus ghost mail. I actually had this one pulled up already. Damn. So I was already Impressive. on it. Anyways, um, so bonus mail. So this one comes from Kim. Hi, guys. My name is Kim. I'm so excited to finally be able to send my stories in. I've been obsessed with you guys for some time now and have finally had some time to sit down and write this all down. I want to start with my very first paranormal experience. I believe I was about five years old when my parents and I lived in a small one-bedroom apartment. My sister and brother had just come from Peru, and my parents decided to give them our bedroom while we slept on the pull-out couch so they can be comfortable. I remember this so vividly. So the, uh, to the left of our pull-out couch was two big windows, and the right was a hallway leading to our bedroom. On the left side of the bed, it was my mom, dad, and I, and I was always glued to my dad, so I wanted to be right beside him. I can't remember why I woke up in the middle of the night, but I did, and I remember starting to play on my dad's back, playing tic-tac-toe with myself and connecting all of his birthmarks, which we, he had plenty of, apparently. Um, as I was playing, I noticed on, on the corner of my eye a hand appear at our window. Ugh. It was completely dark because the streetlight outside our apartment was always on, so it was 100% a hand. I'm not sure why, but I wasn't scared at all. The hand just stood up like it was trying to high-five you the entire time. I continued to play on my dad's back, and the hand seemed to play with me as well, almost like it was mimicking my hand movements. Mm -hmm. I ended up falling asleep, and the next morning I mentioned it to my parents, which they dismissed me because they are no way, there was no way for a person to be able to get to our window because we are on the fourth floor. Also, the fire escape wasn't even on that side of our building. That story has always stayed with me for 20 years. Um, I've also encountered the shadow man at the first house we moved into right after this apartment. When you guys spoke about him, I was so stunned and in disbelief that it, it, this was such a common experience. Mm. He would always wake me up in the middle of the night like he wanted me to know it was uh, he was standing there and watch me right at my door into, into my bedroom. Yep, that's, that's your experience, yep. Maddie. Yep. Yeah, and we, we've discussed that many exactly. times that, that in our earliest understanding of, of Hat Man was that he's, he's a watcher. Right. He watches from just at the threshold of the door, like the hallway, or sometimes outside the window. Mm -hmm. So I'd be petrified under my sheets almost every night. It felt completely different from anything else I've ever experienced. There was one time where my sheets were pulled from me in the middle of the night it wasn't aggressive or anything. It happened slowly, but it was truly frightening. 
at this point, I know no one would ever play like that with me um, because I was always so sensitive. The next morning, I was even scared to ask them if that um, if that was them because they would assure me that something was able to physically was uh, was able to physically mess with me. So when they reassured me they didn't do it, they decided to do a flower cleanse on me. I'm not sure how it works, but my mother bathed me in various flower petals completely nude as she said a prayer or some words. Um, she then put the petals in a black bag and left it somewhere. Uh, no one was able to get to it. After that, I was finally able to sleep through the night. I've always been so interested in the paranormal and I felt a little guilty because I'm not a religious person. So many people ask me how I could believe in spirits and not believe in religion. How can I be open to spirits but not be protected? I've had several small encounters, like small shadows in my basement, seeing my grandfather very quickly, seeing a young boy slave in Jamaica for the quickest two seconds, etc. I've experienced these things, so that's why I believe. But something I fear I shouldn't look into these things, or sometimes I fear I shouldn't look into these things because I don't want to run into something negative mm -hmm. without having anyone or anything to protect me. Uh -huh. Any advice? Thank you so much. Please continue the great work. Um, the floating hand story is kind of tripping me up a little bit because at the very least, I think it was some type of entity that was just not fully forming itself. It was only manifesting the hand part of it. And it was actually drawing. If it was mimicking you, then that makes sense that its form was actually being created by mimicry. So it, right. was, it was getting its form from you. You know, that is that is, there is something to be yeah. said about that notion that a spirit observes to get the fine features right. of a person down, well, which suggests that maybe we're not talking about a ghost, but right. rather an entity that needed a form. And if it started with a hand utilizing yeah. the very thing that you were utilizing at the time, um, it makes sense, especially because you were actually connecting to another living person at the right. time that that creates an interesting kind of uh, uh, notion of how spirits might be able to map the human physical experience. Right. That is super fascinating. Um, and I also find it bizarre that you didn't really feel afraid of it um, because that's an interesting reaction to something that could in theory be the unknown. Yeah. yeah. When you, when you're faced with the unknown fear is, is oftentimes the go-to emotion. Right. And so to see something unknown and so, so expressly strange and unknown, um, there must've been some connective or right. connection that kept you from feeling fear of it. Um, so there is a lot going on. I actually just heard, I, a, I was telling people about the hat man and one of my friends, and this is the common story of the hat man. When I tell people about the hat man, it starts with them saying, what is that? I've never heard of that. And then it turns into, oh my God, I've had an experience. And I find that to be endlessly fascinating Right. <laughs> when you talk to somebody and they, at the beginning of the, uh, the, the discussion, they're like, I've never heard of anything like that. And then by the end, they're like telling me their hat man story. So my friend tells me the story where she First, she says, oh, I have a friend who has this, uh, a friend we share. And I was like, yes, I know, the, um, the man with the bowler hat. And she's like, yes. And then I watched her face just like light up. And she's like, oh, my God, I've, I've had an experience. And I was like, please tell me. And she says, well, I was sleeping and I woke up. I was in my bed and I couldn't move. I was like, classic. And, classic. <laughs> and, and this shadow man was standing right over me. And his hand was reaching over my nose and mouth. And he was saying, hush, little girl. Hush, oh. little girl. Hush, little girl. And I was like, that is terrifying. Why? That was so terrifying. Out of everything you can say is a ghost. <laughs> Why you got to say that? I I would have been better like, you know, anything. Yeah. Anything. Just be like, <laughs> silence. That would have been much better. Um, meatloaf for dinner. Meatloaf for dinner. <laughs> meatloaf for dinner. <laughs> yeah. But no, I, I was, that gave me a chill because she was, yeah. she was recounting it with such ease. Yeah. But when she started getting to what he was saying, I was like, that's terrifying. Oh, my God. But yes, yeah, so so the hat man phenomena or the shadow man phenomena is very widespread. But it's fascinating to me how many people don't even realize mm -hmm. that they've had this common experience, this experience that is 
you know, yeah. connective to so many people and, and they have the same elements being watched, mm-hmm. uh, you know, having this figure in their life. Um, so, yeah. Are we becoming a hat man like database? We are becoming yeah. a hat man are, database. We are a hat man database. Yeah. We definitely are a hat man database. It's like, so funny. We've because, talked about it so many times. We really have. Well, well it, and people bring it to us is the thing. Yeah. You know, yeah. People show us things and bring us things. And and it's weird because we kind of roll our eyes every time it happens. Not because we don't believe it. Not because it's not sincere. Right. It's just like, how is it always coming back to Hat Man? Right. <laughs> We're not expecting Hat Man. We're not asking for Hat Man. <laughs> yeah. We didn't specifically put out a flyer saying, send us your Hat Man yeah. stories. This is yeah. not the most Hat Man podcast. Well, it is interesting because way, way, way back when we first started this and we were starting to, you know, get a little bit more organized and things and we were, you know, discussing like, oh, like, what's some topics we want to talk about? The first thing that was like incessantly like dinging in my head was like, you should tell the story about your hat man experience. And I was like, that's not even one of my best ghost encounters. <laughs> like, why would I talk about that? And um, apparently that was like the open yeah. the floodgates of everybody else's. Well, something cake. highly relatable and it must exist in our, in our, uh, you know, shared consciousness mm-hmm. that there is this, this entity that stands just right outside of our existence that seems to be watching us at all times. And we've heard more and more about, interactive hat men, which is new to us. I it's mean, so, every time somebody's yeah. like, I saw red eyes, I was like, oh, that's interesting. And I, in, my, yeah, yeah. in my experience, hat man has no features. So to hear people mm-hmm. say that he has uh, red eyes or I could see him smiling or things like that, it's like, oh, he's I'm going to have to put- yeah, Exactly, he's moving. Mm-hmm. He's yeah. moving closer because a lot of times hat man is just standing and you just mm-hmm. know he's staring at you. So, you know, it's fascinating to hear all of these uh, uh, additions to the lore. Mm-hmm. I wonder if uh, Hatman is a reminder from mm. the other side that they exist. Possibly. It's very likely. Uh, and there's also, you know, in traditions of almost every culture, there is a entity uh, responsible for watching over for, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, the watcher. The watcher, guardian angel, you know, uh, uh, waiter at the gates, you know, uh, whoever it is that is supposed to be observing our existence. When you see it, you're actually in the uncanny. You're you're out mm-hmm. of the normal dealing with something that we're not supposed to witness or see or. Right. You know. So, yeah, I think that's super fascinating. Um, yeah, it's. It, it's just like I'm just trying to. I'm still trying to process the hand. It's <laughs> well, the hand, and again, uh, anytime a spirit is mimicking you, yeah, there is like a notion that it is connecting to you. It's connecting to you, or right. it is, has already connected to you. Eo uh, Eo Serenity asks, "What do you think is the significance of the Hat Man? Like, what do you think his purpose is to be so prevalent and just watch?" Um. So there could be a lot of reasons. Um, it could be, you know. Uh, what are y'all top three? Top three reasons if you had to put money on it. Put money on why Hat Man's there? Yes. So I think that the unknown entities draw themselves into a shape that we can comprehend. A figure in a, in a hat uh, spans generations. It's something that uh, that we can kind of grasp onto. So when a when a when a figure is trying to look acceptable in our world, hiding its features, making sure that you can't tell what it is, obscuring its true nature, wearing a long overcoat and a wide brimmed hat or a, a hat of any type, puts it in a human shape, one that we recognize and don't immediately get freaked out by, Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, uh, and so I think it is uh, just a way for shadow entities or darkness or, or things that are beyond our comprehension, how they represent themselves in a way that we can relate to. Mm -hmm. So I think it's partly our mind saying, this is what I'll accept. Right. Like if you show up like a giant bug, I'm going to freak out. If you show up like a swirling series of vortexes, I'm not going to understand it. But if you coalesce into a shape that I can say there was a shadow man, there's a man here, a, a figure that gives it an anchor into yeah. our world. And that anchor is our ability to interact and relate to it. I, I agree with that. I also think 
I, I don't know. Maybe some of these um, Hatman things, I'm not entirely convinced that it's not something else that's masquerading as a hat man. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, but like a traditional hat man, I think it's just a voyeuristic spirit, to sure. be quite honest. It's watching life. Yeah, it's watching life, watching over people in the way of like just to observe. Sometimes it's that simple. Um, well, we, you know, we, for the last 50 plus years, in neighborhoods all around this country, mm. there have been neighborhood watch signs. Right. Take a good look at that neighborhood watch sign. Whoa. It is a shadow Shots figure like a wearing a hat. Whoa. And it is something that we have just put into our consciousness. Yeah. As the stranger, the other, what to watch out for. So, and my guess is that figure, that shape, has been there for a long time. Yeah. I think yeah. so. Too. The further back you go, you'll hear stories like Spring Hill Jack. Spring Hill yes. Jack is oftentimes talked about as wearing a hat, mm. um, having sulfurous breath, and wearing a cape cloak, so it hides his body because it's fairly well considered he must be some kind of monster because he can jump like twelve feet in the air. Yeah, and, he's under under the cryptid. Yeah, he's category. A cryptid, yeah, category. Technically, but when they when people encounter him, he oftentimes is wearing a cloak and a hat. Yeah, so. we should do it from one to wicked. Ooh, yeah, we should. We oh, should yeah, definitely absolutely. do that. Well, uh, thank you guys so much for sending in your creepy photos and your ghost mails. So thank you. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you have a ghost story or a photo that you want to send to us, you can send it to ghostmail at hauntedcitypodcast.com. Um, we are always looking for ghost mail, so have at it. Um, but with that, my name is Madison Timmons. I'm Chris Susie, And stay spooky, y'all. <laughs>